There it is, AFC North. I am Steve White in our Inglewood, California newsroom, and that is Nick Shook, our Around the NFL writer. And we're going to talk about some camp storylines. And for all of our training camp storylines, go to NFL.com slash countdown. And Nick, we talk about the AFC North right here. Let's start with the, with the, with the division champ, the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, you know, Steve, the, the story about the Ravens this year, coming off of an AFC North title, Coming in with Todd Monk and opening up, opening up the offense last year. Year two, it's all about elevating it, bringing it to the next level. Because, look, Lamar Jackson won his second MVP last season under Munkin's direction, but he also led the team in rushing with over 800 yards. He threw for 3,600 yards. Everything's great there. But then when it came to the playoffs in the AFC title game, suddenly the play calling became a little questionable. The league's top rushing offense only ran the ball eight times with running backs in that game. Lamar had eight himself. So now you go into 2024, and you got to take the next step with the offense. Year two, if last year was Munkin 101, this year is Munkin 201. John Harbaugh has talked about giving Lamar Jackson more agency at the line and pre-snap, getting more creative, and Munkin can't wait to see more out of Rashad Bateman. So I'm expecting them to take the next step because that might be what gets them over the hump. Well, Derrick Henry might be what gets them over the hump as well, getting the big running back from Tennessee. All right, Joe Burrow comes back at quarterback off of injury for the Bengals. What should we be looking for out of them? Well, hopefully Burrow is completely healthy. Everything points to him being healthy. And we know what happened to him last year when he wasn't healthy. He was statuesque in the pocket for the first month. And when he was suddenly better, they were taking off. And then it all fell apart when he again was knocked out for the rest of the season with a wrist injury. So now he should be good. But they don't have Joe Mixon on that roster anymore. And, and folks might look at that and think, well, they'll be fine. They got Joe Burrow. Joe Mixon accounted for 1,400 scrimmage yards last year. And yet before they were about to release him, all they did was trade him to Houston for a seventh round pick. So I'm curious to see. Can Chris Evans, can Zach Moss, the new acquisition, can Chase Brown and Travion Williams effectively replace that production that Joe Mixon provided? Or are we looking at a hidden weakness for the Cincinnati Bengals that maybe we're not paying attention to right now because we can't stop looking at Joe Burrow's immaculate hair and fantastic fashion? That's what I'm really curious to see because otherwise that roster is still very strong. You know you have a sport coat with an open heart in the back like Joey B. wore over in Cannes, France. All right, now the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mike Tomlin, he gets the extension after having another winning season. But they've got something going on at quarterback there. They don't really have one because they've got two. Yeah, and some people say if you don't have one and you have two, you have nobody. But I think that's not necessarily the case with the Steelers because Omar Khan did a fantastic job this offseason. He remade that room so almost overnight. He signs Russell Wilson. He trades away Kenny Pickett. He acquires Justin Fields. And suddenly the Steelers are no longer relying on a youngster who hasn't quite proven it yet, even if he was a local product. But we're not going to talk about quarterback that much. That'll sort itself out. I want to look at the rest of the roster. Omar Khan drafted phenomenally. Troy Fatanu gives you a tackle. Zach Frazier gives you a starting center. And Roman Wilson is my sneaky favorite pick from this class. I think he's going to fit perfectly in that receiving core. Defensively, Peyton Wilson, watch out for him as a blitzing missile, especially on third down. That three-year extension came at the perfect time because Mike Tomlin has the best roster he's had to win since they finished 12-4 and four in 2020. So while we might pay attention to the Ravens and the Bengals with Burrow back and Deshaun Watson and the Browns, watch out for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2024, folks. Okay. All right. Very interesting. Well, you mentioned Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. This is a playoff team, and Deshaun Watson is back from that shoulder injury, or is he? Yeah, we're not so certain about that because it was a bit of a strange injury, but the Browns have kind of prepared accordingly by making a change at offensive coordinator. Kevin Stefanski has called the play since 2020. I don't expect that to change, but in comes Ken Dorsey, who's going to bring with him new ideas to potentially elevate this offense. He did so with Josh Allen. The Bills succeeded, but I felt like they relied on Josh Allen a little bit too much in the run game, and that concerns me about Nick Chubb's place in this offense. We also need to know if Nick Chubb's going to come, when he's going to come back because he's still returning from that significant knee injury. So overall, the first goal is to figure out what you have in Deshaun Watson, and Dorsey seems to be the guy to bring ideas in and open up the mind of Kevin Stefanski more to maybe take advantage of what Deshaun Watson brings, but I think his impact's going to stretch beyond that. That'd be very interesting because all of those teams, any one of them can win the super tough AFC North. Once again, Nick Shook and Reed, NFL.com slash Camp Countdown for all type of camp stories. Thanks so much, Nick.